This lesson deals with the step response of an RL circuit. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7, starting on page 12. Suppose that we have a linear circuit with only one inductance. Furthermore, let's assume that we also have a switch that's changed state at t equals t0. Now with the inductance, we also have an initial condition, and this is the current. In other words, the current cannot jump instantaneously in this inductance. So if, if we have a switch that changes state at t equals t0, then the current that was flowing in this inductance just before that switch changed state, it must still be the same value. Let's assume that we know the value of this initial condition. Now let's solve for the current that flows through this Thevenin equivalent circuit. The rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. So IFT times R Thevenin plus the drop across an inductance, which is L DIDT. Let's pull this L out in front. So I've got DIDT, and then there's no L here, so let's put one in the denominator. And then we multiply this out, we get back R7 in times I of T. All right, now let's divide by this. So we get V7 in divided by L. Let's bring this on the other side of the equation as a minus R7 in over L, I of T, and then we're left with DI dt. Let's further pull out this R7 in over L you see here with a minus sign. So I just got I of t left over. I have a V seven in. I do have an L, but I don't have an R seven in, so I'll have to put one back in and then the minus sign. So when I multiply this out, it gets just V seven in over L. Now divide by this term over here. What I've got on the left hand side of the equation is I of t and then D I of t. Let's integrate both sides of the equation, dt, from some time t zero to t one. The dt's cancel here. What I have here is one over x plus a constant dx. And we mentioned earlier in the chapter that was the natural log of x plus the constant. So x is i of t here and our constant is minus v thevenin over r thevenin. We're going to integrate from t0 to t1. Now this is not a function of time so we could bring it out in front and then the integral of 1 dt is just t evaluated at the upper limit minus the lower limit. Let's evaluate our natural log also at t1 and then also at t0. As I mentioned earlier in the chapter, if you take the log of a ratio of two quantities, it's the same as taking the log of their difference. So let's put these two back together, taking the natural log of their ratio. And then let's get rid of the natural log. Let's make it the exponent of e. So e to the natural log of an argument just becomes that argument. And we're left with this exponential on the other side of the equation. And again, e is equal to 2.718. Now let's solve for i of t1. Let's bring this on the other side of the equation by cross multiplying, and then bring this over on the other side of the equation. I could do a change of variable, get rid of t1 and just call it t in general, and then only t1 is right here. So this is the form of our solution of i of t. I could write this symbolically as f of t, where f of t is i of t. This first term we'll call it a1. The second term times the exponential we'll call b1, and then we have an exponential here. And then previously we were using uh, t minus t0 divided by tau. So let's write this term here as a reciprocal as L over R thevenin. A1 turns out to be V thevenin over R thevenin, and then B1 is the difference of the initial condition in V thevenin over R thevenin. Now as t approaches infinity, this term becomes very, very small, and we approach A1. Let's go back and look at the circuit and see what that implies. So as t is approaching infinity, we see a current flowing that's just equal to V7 divided by R7. That implies that this voltage is zero. So in steady state, the inductance looks like a short circuit. We had made that observation in the last chapter, but this is really the proof of it. The thing with a linear circuit, the current I of T that's flowing in the inductance is related to any other voltage or current in the circuit. So we don't have to always thevenize the circuit, we can just leave it as it is, and we can do like we did previously, find the quantities of interest for the solution of our first order differential equation. As we did previously, let's state this as an algorithm. So we have the step response now of an RL circuit, and this would be for a circuit that contains independent sources, but only one inductance, resistances, and controlled sources, and is the form of a general first order differential equation, which is some a plus b times e to the minus quantity t minus t0 over tau. f of t can be any voltage or any current in your circuit. Tau is L over R thevenin. R thevenin is the resistance seen by the terminals of the inductance. This again would be with all the independent sources set equal to zero. As t approaches infinity, this term drops out and we just get the value of A. As t approaches infinity, we're going to treat the inductance like a short circuit. So we're going to analyze our circuit and figure out the value of F of t when we replace the inductance by a short circuit. 
And then when t is equal to t0, this becomes e to the 0, which is 1, and we have a plus b. So then we can solve for b as the initial value of f minus the value of a. We're going to use the initial condition that the inductance current cannot jump instantaneously and use that to find whatever the variable f of t is at t equals t0. This is how we're going to solve RL switching circuits.